it's road test time. Generally speaking, as a mechanic, I'm really indifferent. Well, okay, my feelings towards road tests range from indifference to dread. So a typical car, it's indifference, you know, and because even if everything goes well, there's still that specter of, I may have to go back to the drawing board. So, you know, indifference to dread, where if it's like a really rare or like a high performance car, you know, you just don't want to hurt it. You're afraid you're going to hurt it or something's going to come along and hurt it for you or whatever it happens to be. It's dread, you dread it. This time's different though. This time we've got, I believe, all of our bugs worked out of the satellite. And now we're going to take it for a nice 10 mile ride through the countryside over here. And I'm going to get to share some of the beautiful Middle Tennessee scenery I get to see every day. This, this shop, from an operational standpoint, is a nightmare. I'm five miles from the nearest anything. But from a scenic standpoint, it's like it's paradise. It's really nice. So we're going to take this thing for a spin, make sure it's all good, and then hand it back to Jim and say, here you go, man. Good to go. So it's been sitting overnight. I haven't started it yet. So we're going to go from ice cold, make sure that it's going to warm up right and kick down and do all the things it's supposed to do. Um, got to, I'm bringing my breakdown box because you know what? You never know. So. It's just something I throw in any vehicle I'm going to take a trip in. And it's, it's just, I mean, stuff that you just may need. You know, a quart of oil, a cheap ratchet set, some sticks of flat, various screwdrivers, wrenches, wires, this points and condenser in here. Um, it's just a coil. It's just a generic breakdown box where you can't fix everything with it, but you can usually get yourself limped to wherever, you know, wherever you got to go. Um, this is a little warped. So let's fire this thing up. And see what we got. Keys. Thank you, camera person. So good. I saw yesterday that the gas gauge doesn't work on this. So last night I took a siphon hose and I ran it into the tank and it's got at least three quarters of a tank, so I'm not worried about that. The other gauges all work. The opening of the gauge works, temperature gauge, so we should be good to go. Kick down nice. We got a nice firm pedal. Car's got drums all the way around, the original 10 inch drums. They feel great. Steering feels nice. I wonder if this is the original steering box because these things usually have that pinky steering, like they're just way too light. This one feels like it's got a nice feel to it.
guys that may not know where we are, this is an area in Middle Tennessee, south of Nashville, and this is called Triune. And we're between Murfreesboro behind us, Franklin in front of us, we've got Nolansville to our right. So we're going to take a little loop with this thing and go up towards Nolansville and then come back to back roads. It's about a 10 mile loop. This car feels solid. I mean like really, really solid. There's no looseness to it. There's no shaking, no vibration. It rolls along the road perfectly. So given a gas going up the hill, we have no pinging or anything like that. I don't know what gas is in here, I'm just assuming it's regular. But no ping, no nothing. The power is good, it's smooth. And it's not smoking anymore. Yesterday, after I put it together, put the carburetor back on it and all, I ran it in the shop for a while and, and, and buzzed it a few times hard. And now I see like no evidence of smoke at all behind us. Temperature gauge was riding exactly where it should. You guys out of these old Mopars, and you want to know where your temperature gauge should be when it's perfect? That's it, right there. That's the perfect position for your temperature gauge.
To our left is where Whistle and Diesel lives, about five miles down the road. And we're heading up towards Nolansville, home of the annual Buttercup Festival. Which is like my favorite thing in the world. Get it going uphill here and see what it does. Right, so at this point, I'm confident that this car is good to go. Now it's more of a joyride than anything else, to be honest with you. It's just it's the perfect day, the perfect car, the perfect scenery. Not very often I really get to enjoy the car for a day. I'm doing it now. It's the perks of my job.
the countryside here in Middle Tennessee. Like if you got if you're into motorcycles or you got a nice car like a convertible like this, there's no better way to kill some time or just mellow out, relax. <laughs> that was a nice ride. So I got to say, this car is as close to flawless as you can get. I mean, yeah, it needs some detail work, some metal work, and Kiwi's going to take care of that. But mechanically and structurally, this car is like really, really, really tight. It's, it's a great car. Uh, it needs nothing as, as, as far as I can tell, uh, except for that gas gauge, and I'm sure the owner will get around to that. Speaking of the owner, Jim, thank you so much for sharing your car with me and our viewers, and uh, you got a good one here. You, you got a really good car here. All right, guys, there you go. The journey from coming off the rollback to the road test, all complete. What a beautiful car. What a beautiful day. See you tomorrow.